So last Friday, we released a video that was five months in the making. I am, of course, talking about the Vitalik Biberin Staking is Yummy deepfake video. But what does that have to do with blockchain? Well, you're about to find out. Coming up, some terrible singing. Have the rags, have me spinning, babe. I point at a screen, and something strange happens to my face. So I'm going to be doing this video not as the creative director of Harmony, but just as myself. And it's a funny one because my background is a filmmaker. I've been making films for 20 years. And sometimes I wonder whether technology has gone too far, whether the impact of visual effects on the things that we see in the cinema has kind of cheapened the experience to a degree. So this video represents, I guess, my own journey into trying to figure out where the line between truth and entertainment really lies. Please don't be afraid. This will get better. So the backstory behind this is that at the end of last year, I came up with this idea, which was, what if Nouriel Rabini sang a song about what had happened in crypto? Because Nouriel Rabini is a famous crypto skeptic, and I thought it would be really funny. Once upon a time, I called the market. Right. They called me Dr. Doom. I stink out every drone. The Rubin me up. The Rubin me up. The Rubin me up. Me, 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 me. What happened was that this video did go mildly viral. And I say mildly viral because relative to where our YouTube channel was, relative to where our videos had been, this was a big success. So off the back of that, I started to think about what could we do that would have viral impact, that would gain the subscribers, that would, would do the same kind of thing and be a good follow-up to that. So I started to think about what were the most viral things I could think of at that time. And you have to remember, this is in January 2020. So this is about six months ago. And it was Justin Bieber and, of course, Vitalik. So I was like, okay, well, if we take Vitalik and Justin Bieber, smash them together, what do we get? And that's when I came across the idea of deepfakes. And so began a journey <laughs> into a world of pain to try and create Vitalik Bieber, the deepfake. And this is that story. So over the last 20 years or so, I've been making music videos, I've been making all sorts of different creative things. And what has been a constant is, I spend a lot of time in post-production because for whatever reason, I grew up as a guerrilla filmmaker, which meant that whatever you had to hand, whatever you could do yourself became what you did. And as digital tools and as computers got more and more powerful, what you could do on the back end was disproportionate to what you could do on the front end. Human beings are expensive. Putting actors in front of a camera, securing locations is expensive, but the world of a computer is limited only by your imagination and by the software that you've got access to. So for me, visual effects have always gone hand in hand with storytelling because I'm always looking to create something that hasn't been done before, something that's slightly different. And visual effects are a way of, you know, they can support a story world, they can add an element that wasn't there before. So you'll see in all the videos that I do for Harmony that there's, there's always motion graphics or there's some kind of visual eye candy that can't be created just by putting something in front of the camera. And so deepfakes have always been this thing that have been sitting in the back of my head and like, uh, it could be a fun thing to do. What really did it for me was when I saw Jordan Peele's Barack Obama deepfake. Because you could see Barack Obama looked Barack Obama-like. The voice sounded Barack Obama-like. And even though the head was moving in a weird way, he was blinking, his eyes moved, and there was this real sense of unease about what you were watching because you knew it wasn't real. He was using language that Barack Obama doesn't use. The voice didn't sound quite right. And yet at the same time, it was convincing enough and seductive enough to invite you into the world of that character. It's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. There's something about the way a human being's eyes jump around, they search, they hunt, they twinkle. Computer-generated characters can't do that. And yet, with deepfakes, we suddenly have this, this responsiveness to the underlying source material that creates an energy and a feeling in synthetic media that is, wow, it is close. It's not there, but it's close. So there's this idea that deepfakes are this you know, one-click solution and you just press a button and out comes a deepfake and anyone can do it. 
That is not the case. Not at all. So what do you need to do to create a deep fake? Well, you need some software. Unfortunately, it's open source, which means it's free. And that's kind of amazing because it's so powerful and it can do so much. But when I started this, I was using a five-year-old iMac bootcamp to run Windows and it was completely rubbish. Basically what I had to do was then build my own custom PC with like the magic bullet for doing all of this, which is the GeForce 2080 Ti, which if you're into gaming, you'll know is like, it's a pretty sweet graphics card. With the 2080 installed, everything fell into place. First step was to feed the algorithm lots of images of Vitalik and identify the faces. Then add in the destination material of Justin Bieber and let the algo train. Now with the 2080, this could happen a lot faster, but it was still many, many days of training before I started to see results I was happy with. Even so, there were tens of shots that just had to be rejected as they didn't work. Profile shots are particularly hard, but even just an odd tilt of the head or a weird facial expression, and it would throw the whole thing off. Once trained, the next step is to merge the train material with the background piece and use the color blending tools in DeepFace Lab to get as clean a result as possible. But as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done. So another piece of this is, of course, the song. Now, we have a Justin Bieber song that is sung by Justin Bieber, and I wanted to change the lyrics, and I wanted to have him sing something else. Now, Vitalik doesn't sing, or he kind of raps, which is fun, of course. Proof of stake is hard, but what I do know is when we weren't a shard, we'll change the whole game, though. Therefore, I had to find someone to sing the song. Now, believe it or not, I used to be a chorister back in the day. I used to be something of a musician. And I thought, yeah, of course, I can sing this. This will be fine. I'll be able to sing it. It'll be able to sound all right, you know. But it's been 20 years since I sang, like properly sang. And that just brought up a whole bunch of other problems. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to record the live vocal and you will hear just how wretched it actually sounds. Here we go. Yeah, you got that staking, 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 staking. Got my coins, got my keys. Yeah, babe, yeah, babe, yeah, babe. I need tokens every day. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not a genius to work out that that is, that's not that good, it's not that good. But now let's do some magic. Okay, so now we have the material in Reaper. It's recorded and it's ready to go. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm basically gonna turn off the effects. That is filth. That's utter, utter filth. But if I turn the effects back on, you will hear something entirely different. So what is going on here? Well, the answer is it's something very simple and very profound, and it's what we like to call Autotune. So Autotune is a, is a plugin, basically, and what it allows you to do is take the sound that you recorded, the notes that you sang, and put them in the right place, pitch-wise. And you've just heard how awful my original vocal sounded. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, because I have Autotune. So what it's now done is it's scanned through the track and it's figured out what note I was singing and what note I was trying to sing. And with D minor selected, it means that it's now gonna try and push the different notes to where they wanna be. But I still have this variation in my vocal and I still have this variation in what I'm doing. So we can start to really get granular in how we adapt what I actually sang to what I wanna sing. So I have these weird little variations here, these little nuggets that just went down. So I'm just gonna push them one by one to the right place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take all of these notes, select them, then turn the speed down and turn the note transition down. And if we now zoom in, you will see something profound has happened. Because where the notes had these wiggly lines before, if I 
you see the way they the no transition gives you that that flavor of an audio performance so i turn them down so they're actually just straight lines you get a really big difference So I get this kind of robotic sound. By doing this, I'm able to take what is a really crappy vocal and, and make it sound passable. And that is good enough to make my own voice into a deep fake of a voice that sounds like a proper voice should sound, or at least close enough. Yeah, you got that staking, 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 staking. Got my coins, got my keys. Yeah, babe, yeah, babe, yeah, babe. Earning tokens every day. Got my coins, got my keys. Medium the target when you're busy. So, now that we have the deep fake shot spat out, it's time to go into compositing, drop it into the edit, and look at what we actually have. As you can clearly see, there are dancing edges, and then when Bieber actually blinks, you can see here, his eyeballs just go white. So what you wanna do is basically blend the edges of the mask deep fake shot with the real skin. And the thing is, what you're trying to do is you're trying to match the skin tones and the lighting textures. And the defect does quite a good job of that in the main feature areas of the face, but it doesn't do such a good with it, job with it on the edges. So all you do is just kind of blend them out and you use a feather. So if I solo <clears throat> this layer, you can see that actually what's being deep faked here, what's actually being tracked on top is a very kind of rough and quite smooth edged map. And what, what I find amazing is that this is the only information that tells us that it's Vitalik. It's this tiny little fragment here, bit of nose, bit of eyes, bit of mouth. But once you blend that on top of everything else, it's no longer Justin Bieber, it's now Vitalik Bieber in. And then what we did with the eyes is essentially you take a patch of the eye from when it's still visible, track it back on to the footage, and then move it until we get to the, the next bit where we can see his eye. And then you have an eye that doesn't whiz out and go white. So he doesn't blink, but we don't have some weird eyes. But man, a lot of work, a lot of work to get these shots to function properly. Now the algorithm gets smarter the longer it learns, and while it took four months to get results I was happy with for Yummy, I was actually able to create new deep fakes that I think looked better and more realistic for the ETA and BBC extracts that were posted on Twitter in just a single afternoon. So what does this have to do with blockchain? Well, in a Wired magazine article from 2018, journalist Antonio Garcia Martinez put it very succinctly. This last remaining artifact that we take has an accurate portrayal of physical reality, the moving image captured in real time will now be as plastic and mutable as paint canvas. We are experiencing a global truth crisis where our faith in what we once trusted is being eroded to the point of collapse. And hopefully, as I've now demonstrated, deep faking is really not easy at all. Well, at least not at the moment. But the genie is well and truly out of the bottle, and this is only going to become more user-friendly, simpler, more efficient, and basically do what all technology tends to do, become mass marketable. Trust is one of the strongest propositions of blockchain. And there are already projects such as Amber Video and Aletheia looking to build best practices for deepfakes and powerful detection tools. And even Facebook and Microsoft have both taken initiatives to detect and remove deepfake videos. But if we look at our own deepfake, the Bieber one, we can see that we picked up a copyright claim on the video. It recognized copyright material present in it, but only in the first 15 seconds. Any deepfake altered material passed the test and wasn't flagged. Synthetic media will likely move into the production pipelines of businesses in terms of their content creation needs. I see that certainly happening with the pandemic accelerating, uh, the need to experiment and innovate with content. And from a consumer standpoint, I think synthetic media will become more mainstream with apps like TikTok or Instagram providing unique ways for consumers to interact with content like this or even create content like this. So it's going to be a fascinating interplay between the two sort of uh, driving demands of consumption and creation. 
when you see a Hollywood film, you know it's a Hollywood film or it's a movie that you're watching versus synthetic media where you're unable to decipher very clearly what the lines are between reality and fiction. If we are to move towards a blockchain-based reality and have uh, the blockchain provide a layer of trust or provenance to every single piece of content. We need to ensure that uh, underlying layer one solution has the right mechanics for truth to emerge, but also has the right incentives for falsehoods to be disputed. Deepfakes are going to be indistinguishable from reality. This is guaranteed. And you may be thinking that this is no biggie, but what if instead of me talking to you, it was Vitalik? And instead of my voice, you hear his. I started to realize uh, that there were um, a lot more interesting things that you could do with blockchains than uh, just uh, a single peer-to-peer -peer currency. Well, then things get a bit scary. So that's why I'm deleting the Vitalik model from my hard drive. It's a bittersweet moment, this. Vitalik and I have spent six months together. Although I say that, but really it's just been me with Vitalik. And I've gotten to know the strange contours of his nose, the way his chin shapes. That's an unhealthy relationship, no doubt. And maybe now is the right time to say goodbye. Maybe the right time to just let it go. But I have so much I've invested in this, so much time I've spent figuring this particular puzzle out, getting it wrong, failing a lot. So in many ways, my journey into machine learning and my journey into deep faking has been irrevocably tied to Vitalik. He doesn't know me, doesn't know anything about me. But what I would like to say to Vitalik is, if this has offended you, or if this has felt an invasion, then I'm sorry. That was never the way it was intended. The more I do this, the more I, I place Vitalik's head on other heads, the better I get at it. And that's risky territory because the more adept I become at it, the more temptation there will be to abuse it. So the right thing to do right now is to take the model and simply delete it. And that's it gone. We as a species want to believe whatever confirms our worldview. And amidst crumbling trust in the institutions we used to rely on for trusted sources, we double down on false beliefs, not in spite of credible evidence to the contrary, but precisely because we're being repeatedly told that credibility is not to be trusted. Blockchain is one way to create a source of truth, but ultimately, Whatever we want to believe, we will believe. So under these conditions, whatever I can do to shine a light on this technology, demystify it, make it entertaining or whatever, I think that's my duty. This is a big topic and it's going to influence us in ways that we haven't even seen yet. There are positives, of course. Imagine reviving a lost loved one and bringing them back to life. Would it be creepy or would it be comforting? I'm not sure. I do not believe in my death. Do you? Synthetic media is here. We're seeing the beginning of it. And what we used to take as truth, a human speaking, talking to us, communicating, will increasingly be something that is not human. And I find that incredible. That's why I made this video about it. So hey, if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, then go ahead, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one. Peace! Yeah. Ice Age Meltdown, Layer 1, Layer 3, 927, Turnery.